Hi everybody, how you doing? Uh, the um, today, what I want to talk about is sort of the opposite of what has been sort of an assumption, and that is is that if you have an in-house movement, your watch is automatically better. And the way this whole discussion began, really, is when there were some relatively cheap movements that were put into watches that had airs of high horology and they use these phony baloney names for their uh, calibers. And after uh, looking at some of the things that uh, Agon Agonor did, this is, uh, I thought, well, hey, you know, what is there? I say, who's here? Oh, let's see, Bruce, Clyde, Kaz. Uh, let's see who we got. Chris. Hi, Chris. Uh, da, 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 da. NS something. How's it going? Uh, Mike, Tennessee Mike. How's it going, man? Klaus. Hey, Klaus from Norway. <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, and Redskins pride. Poor Redskins. That is most rough being a Redskin fan this year. So I used to be a Charger fan, so I know how that is. I still am, I suppose. Okay, NS something in Haja, or Haja? Hello, how is everybody today? Okay, um, I the way this whole thing came up uh, was, like I said, this, this, this whole issue was that, you know, maybe there's some really good movements out there. They, they may cost a, a good deal more, such as Vosher. I mean, somebody puts a Vosher in their... Um, in their watch, and uh, they're paying at a minimum of like a thousand dollars for that voucher compared to like maybe a hundred for an ETA, and and so th these are these are the tough things. Hey, watch lounge, how's it going? Um, so th this is really what I wanted to to sort of explore. Now, a, a couple ones that I've had that. I sort of found and I and I like. I don't know how good or great they are, uh, but they seem to be. And uh, one was the Jacques 736, which a number of watch companies had used that movement. And I just started a collection. I have two so far: a um, oh god, a Maurice Lacroix and a uh, Dunhill, both having exactly the same. Uh, Jacques 736 movement, and and then I think when we were talking about Ophian, there was they had one that was sort of interesting. It was from Techno Time, I think uh, Techno Time, I think is the name of the uh, movement company. And they, when Techno Time went out of business, they somehow got bought up by Festina, so Prod, and then. They have a um, a company in uh, Switzerland that sort of is their their factory area where they have all kinds of stuff that they're doing with uh, very precise kind of engineering that's guided by computers, and so they're able to come up with some some interesting things. Now the techno time was the the basic movement, and that hasn't changed, but they started doing some other things to it. Now just before we started today, I read a very interesting article. And it was about, uh, it was on the, uh, I, I don't know if you guys get this or not, but I get these, uh, th these like newsletters and um, watch time uh, there. They were going on and on. And oh, they went to uh, Switzerland and they got the royal treatment by uh, Sandoz and Parmigiani. And uh, it sounds like they were wine and dine. And what they, what they were talking about, was the uh, toric hemispheres retrograde now i have the other uh parmigiani retrograde and i and i love it it's a great watch but the but the toric parmigiani retrograde had the retrograde date on it rather than a little window date and it won a a, a grand prize a, a gphg grand prize now here's the thing about it. i read the article and they were saying about all of this stuff and they went through on all of the process and everything of how it got done and but the in the video that i had yesterday there was mention of that same watch as having 
something done by Agenor. And they didn't mention that, which I thought was sort of interesting. I thought, hmm, you know, <laughs> here you've got this guy, uh, Parmigiani, Misal Parmigiani is, is, is a watchmaker. He makes watches, but uh, like this one, uh, I, my Harry Winston has a bi-retrograde, and the bi-retrograde was by Agenor. I was sent uh, uh, Nicholas Viterich, who's, who is uh, Jean-Marc Viterich's son, had sent me the, the little diagram for it and showing me uh, what they had done. But there was no mention of this in this article by Watch Time. So anyway, I thought that was sort of interesting. Okay. Uh, so let's see. What are you guys? What's up? Uh, you're wearing a Harry Winston, I see. Do you consider it a dress watch? I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I consider this a tuxedo. Uh, it, yeah, sure, it, it, it probably is a, a dress watch. Um, the reason I'm laughing uh, wasn't at your comment, but rather at the way I dress, which is ever since I've retired, I can dress any way I want to. Uh, yeah, this is uh, what I had on. I've been wearing all day long, and I forgot I had it on was my... Um, Patek Philippe Calatrava. This one is uh, so light, I, I, I forgot I had it on. <laughs> but anyway, okay, let's see. When brand A features a movement by company B, how does that affect service and repair? Do you send it off to brand A, who then sends it to company B? You know, some other people have been asking about that. And, you know, I, I told them, don't worry about it. Uh, what I do is that there's a there's an organization, uh, a watchmakers organization, at least here in the United States, and I'm sure there are elsewhere. And I go to them, and uh, they have different people who will work on things. I have a one friend of mine who's a watchmaker up in Massachusetts, has a contract with Rolex, so he can. But he he's not a he doesn't sell Rolexes, but he's one of the guys who can repair them and then they provide the movements and everything else that you need for that. Uh, but, and he's got nothing but uh, business all the time. Here you have like the 736. I'm still trying to figure out, you know, what the parts are that they made the uh, Jacques 736 out of and talking to somebody and they were taking a look at, they had a watchmaker with them. They said, it looks like a Valju, not a Valju, but a, um, an ETA 7001, which is a Pazu 7001 originally. And it looks like they they did something with that. Well, they, what they did with it, I mean, they went from a round uh, movement into one that, of a shaped case. Now, that's more than just sort of, tag packing it on to an existing movement uh and and it's a very good movement as it turns out that's that's a come I like to collect them but th these kinds of questions and, and uh clyde I, I i know a lot of people ask the same thing well what about repair um i i guess i should worry more about it but i really don't uh with my fp joins i send them to the <laughs> to the most expensive service, I think, of any watch uh, that I have anyway. Uh, and they have a place uh, in Miami for customers here in the United States. And, of course, uh, in Europe, they, I think they go to all go to Geneva. Is it true only watch uh, gurus uh, have four uh, Pateks? I don't know. I only have one, <laughs> and it's an old one. Okay, Andreas. Hi, Andreas. How you doing? I like the black watch on the right hand. Oh, I also have wear a fitness tracker. <laughs> My Fitbit. All right, that doesn't count. We don't count those. We are mechanical watch guys. Um, okay, let's see. All right. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Oh, Haja, how do you like the watch you bought from China? The regulator, my regulator, my $200 regulator is keeping time, <laughs> keep perfect time. <laughs> you know, what can I say? Hey, Dr. A and B, how you doing? Uh, yeah, this is, this is one of those ironies. I don't know. Maybe the thing is going to break day after tomorrow. I have no idea. All I know is that it works really well. 
and uh, it keeps excellent time. So, you know, maybe, and, and I'm the one who's been blowing money left and right on, on really expensive watches. And, um, yeah, you know, this is, this is the insanity of our hobby. Someone was telling me that they had a um, tourbillon for 350 bucks they picked up. Yeah, it's possible. Any movements made in USA worthy of consideration? Uh, Mike, oh boy, uh, RGM uh, has one that they have for theirs, and they're extremely expensive. Yeah, this this is one of the things that um, is, is sort of interesting. Uh, oh boy, what about the uh, ones that will take these old Hamiltons and fix them up? And when I say old Hamiltons, the ones who were originally made here. Where we live here in Connecticut, we are not far from huge number of uh, old watch factories that are no longer with us. I mean, they, this used, uh, uh, Waltham used to be made up in up the road in Waltham, Massachusetts. And so there are a lot of, a lot of them around here, but you know, they're gone. So I, I, I really don't know. There, there are a couple guys, there's one guy in Oregon, uh, who makes all of his own stuff. And, um, of course there are us are the pretentious watchmakers, but we're, we're, <laughs> we're worldwide. <laughs> Okay, hey, Klaus, let's see. And if company A and B are located in the same building, does this make it in-house? Oh, man, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Anything in particular you're looking uh, forward to seeing at Watch Time New York? Absolutely. Yes, I am. Watch Time uh, that's coming up in a few weeks in New York, I want to, uh, the very first thing I'm going to see after I uh, check out everybody at uh, – we're going to meet up at uh, Chopek, uh Friday night before we get too <laughs> too blasted. Uh, but I want to go to see that movement that uh, uh, Aganor made for uh, Fianna Kruger. Boy, I tell you, the more I found out about that, the more I have, wow. Here, here's a movement made from this this wild look on watch called Entropy, and so Agon she went to Aganor. Okay, hey. Zinig, Zinquig. Okay, what do you think about Swatch Group spare parts policy? They won't sell to any spare parts to independent watchmakers in public. Same goes for Richemont Group. So you don't really uh, own that your watch. You don't have the right to repair. I don't know. I you know. Um, I, I why don't you have a simple name? I'm gonna call you. RQ, that's the first and last of your name, uh, Renzi Quig. Um, of course, that may be a, it's a perfectly good name. I, I just may be stupid. Um, the, the point, uh, first of all, I don't think they have that policy. I don't think uh, uh, ETA has, uh, you can get ETA parts, and ETA is owned by uh, Swatch. And a lot of watchmakers, in fact, most watchmakers I know, they love ETA because they can get parts for it. Hey, Milton, how's it going, man? Uh, and you're late. Go stand in the corner and bring a note. <laughs> uh, McLaren is happy to sell you a full engine. Yeah, <laughs> they do. Huh? All right. Um, hey, Mike Parrish, how you doing? Uh, second RGM and Weiss in L.A. Weiss in L.A., are you sure about him as far as um, as making his own movements? I know that he takes some ETAs and fixes them up, but I don't know if he does that or not. Um, so, well, okay. Uh, so let's talk about these other ones. You guys, listen, Rizzi, drop that. Okay, we're not going to talk about that anymore. We're not going to talk about, ooh, can you get it fixed? All right, let's talk about what are some of these really good movement makers that are not in-house, that are better than in-house. One that comes to mind is the um, uh, UWD 33.1. Now, this is the one that's out of um, 
uh, Langenheim. Well, it's not Langenheim. It's called, oh boy, UWD. I forgot what that stands for. Um, something Works uh, Dresden. Wait, you, 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 you. I forgot anyway. Uh, now, that movement I would love to have. There, there's a watch company out of uh, Munich that uses it. But they make the ugliest watches I've ever seen. They have a beautiful movement in an ugly watch. Uh, they didn't do much for their watch design. Um, hey, Daniel F. Oh, that's right. Uh, do you and work Dresden? Exactly. That's the one. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, now, here you have a, a really a, a truly superior movement. Not only that, but they have, you can see it and you can see the aspects of it. Um, I, I, I really think that's interesting, uh, is a great example. Yeah. Of more watchmakers would use them. <sighs> you know, I can't even get a replacement bar for my, uh, Lang and Heim from Lang and Heim. God knows what they're doing with that. I, I'm really not very, I, I've got to get uh, a couple bars for my, uh, uh, for my, um, uh, uh, Frederick the second. And uh, they've been having problems with that. And so here you have this. I don't know. Uh, ever since Marco Wang left, I don't know. I, that, that really disappointed me. Sin has also one of the DUW, but also, oh, yes, they do. That's right. Uh, Sin has a very interesting one. Hey, Alone Riggs. How you doing, man? Um, Elton. Is that right? I said it wrong. Kaz. Ask him at the show. Uh, who's the, I don't uh, ask who at the show, uh, Kaz. Um, <laughs> he, uh, Lang and Hines not going to be there, and certainly not Marco Lang. Uh, let's see the opposite of Rolex. Uh, let me uh, watch ugly move. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. You're going to get all the Rolex people mad at you. You know, there's some I'm trying to think. I don't know. Uh, the the learning as much as we can, I think, uh, about making uh, similar adjustments. Hi, Lawrence. How you doing, man? Uh, I I think it's the only thing that can save us. I, I I'm not suggesting that we go and try watch repair because <laughs> I've broken enough movements. Fortunately, I just mess around with cheap movements. Uh, but th the thing is, is that you can start understanding certain things. Like, for example, simple service is a matter of knowing the oiling points. Um, and if you take or, uh, whatever fluid that's used, if you go to ETA, ETA.ch, I think, they have the entire, the entire oiling points, what oil to use, uh, and, and even on, on different pivots really fantastic. Uh, I mean, that's one thing about ETA, I'll say. It. And so if you get a clone, uh, some guy wrote some time ago that the uh, uh, Siegel clones didn't come uh, lubricated. And so, you know, I, I go to the ETA site, take a look at the clone and see if it's got the same uh, pivot points uh, to be oiled. And it turns out to be not that hard. Um, anyway. Okay, hey Renee, how's it going, man? Uh, Felix, <laughs> uh, let's see, Captain Zed, how you doing, man? Uh, let's see, Rolex Oyster Quartz, <laughs> what? Okay, last year we've had a little problem with my Geo and they fixed it at Watch Show. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's a neat thing. Um, I, I really wish somebody was, was there from uh, Lang and Heim, but man, I've been talking to them and say, oh yeah, we know about that. And, and I'm just talking about, this is just a bar. They have these bars and you screw them in and uh, that's what a pain in the neck. Roger Dubuis movements. Yes. Uh, that's one that ought to be exciting. Uh, let's see. 24 karat. Talk to new repair guy at Rolex 80. He just came back from training and advised me to get out of OQ. What is that, uh, uh, Clive? What's OQ? Uh, they will be. 
Whoa, 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 Kaz. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Langenheim is going to be at the uh, what time show, Kaz? Boy, I hope so. Oh, Oyster Quartz. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, let's see what's else going on. Um, hey, Mooney42, man. How you doing? <laughs> You've been flying that flying sports car of yours lately? God, I love that airplane. Um, okay, uh, so what's, what else is going on? Okay, what are some other movements? One, one I found out, and, and what, what I want to talk about are ones that are possibly better than what they're making themselves. Uh, one thing that I found that I, I might start playing around with is that this Eterna, I don't know if you've seen it or not, it's called the Eterna 3914A. And I've seen that been popping up in a few movements. And I looked at it and, you know, and it looks, you know, it looks Spartan on the one hand, but it looks like it's well built. I mean, there's there's no high horology there to speak of uh, in terms of engraving or finishing or anything like that. But it's just a nice, smooth, clean finish. Um, OK, let's see. Ow. Um, I am hungry Z. I am hungry Z. Okay. Um, I burn my mouth on fried chicken. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? Uh, uh, modern Rolex watches have no soul. I blame Archie for that, Zed. <laughs> Clyde, you blame Archie for everything, <laughs> which, which is sort of, thank God for Archie. Um, uh, I see. They, oh no! Yeah, they're not coming. Right. Uh, see, Omega would wouldn't sell a spring for the uh, Speedmaster Professional. Hey, I'll tell you something. Speaking of springs, Weiss is an ETA ripoff. I don't know if it's a ripoff so much as an homage. <laughs> um. One one thing that's very interesting is the H. Moser spring, and it's called, I forgot the name of, uh, they have some, it starts with an S named after um, a famous watchmaker who made interesting watt springs. And uh, Moser puts out about around 2,000 watches a year, I think. I'm, I could be wrong about that, could be lower. Uh, and they're really good watches. I mean, they're excellent watches. And their movements are fantastic, and they're all done in house by what they call is a sort of like a sub company called Precision Engineering. But when you have when a company makes fifty thousand uh, hair springs, and they make two thousand watches, somebody else is, is using those, and the only one that they can talk about is MBNF because MBNF is proud of the fact that they have these good good springs in it. Now, one of the things, hey, Truth Fears, how's it going, man? Um, the, the, the whole thing about, I think that the watch companies are so used to have, well, they feel that they have to be deceptive of, uh, uh, Clyde told me that's a okay word to use <laughs> that they're using, they're being deceptive rather than, you know, out and out feckless liars or something like that. But what they do is, is and, and we've talked about this, is that they have these phony baloney names that sound like they're in-house, and they're not. Now, the stupid part about it is, is that if they have a really good movement, and but they, they feel obliged to, to, to lie about it, it sort of takes away from it. Um, this is why I, I was a little concerned about the fact that one of my favorite brands, Parmigiani, they won an award, uh, deservedly so, and yet they left out this one little thing, and that's a retrograde. And either that or uh, I, I, I can't imagine why uh, Aganor would say, hey, we that was something we had something to do with, and there was no mention of that at all. So this is sort of another interesting wrinkle in all of these things. Uh, th does anybody have a watch with that uh, with the Eterna uh, 3914 in it? 
that sort of looks like an interesting watch to me. Um, a Moser makes is 1,200 watches, 1,215. Okay, yep, I, I was guessing uh, every year, but they do make uh, a few with two hair springs on the same watch. Uh, not very many, not, not 50,000. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I know on mine they do. I, I have a double hairspring, but they only, they said uh, with the double hairspring, they were only making 20. Uh, and they were going to go into the uh, Swiss Alps model. And I don't even know if they're actually doing it or not. Also, stupidly played uh, golf a few years ago, the PAM 510 and a 90S CMAT. Seem Seamus, something they were both tough movements Let's see yeah moser is cool um look up the eterna 3510 very nice watch okay well no um and that's something what i was talking about it, it yeah eterna has got some cool watches but the they also are providing movements to some companies this is what i was sort of hoping to talk about today what are some of the movements that are other than in-house that are probably better than in-house. Uh, we'll start with an obvious example. Let's say that um, Orient that has, a, they, they make their own movements and so forth. They're very cheap movements and uh, they're inexpensive, they're cheap watches. Uh, and, and by that, I mean inexpensive. And so, you know, you, you pretty much get what you pay for. But let's say that some, some bright light at, uh, uh, Orient said, hey, guys, why don't we put in this uh, Grand Seiko movement, you know, <laughs> sort of up our game, and and then not tell anybody about it, say, oh, it's really an Orient movement. Well, that, that doesn't make any sense. Um, Switzerland is a pimple upon the face of your A.H. <laughs> Clyde. <laughs> Clyde. Oh, okay. Let's see, let's see a few years ago. What else is going on? Um, Daniel, uh, the greatest minds are Vacher and Val Fleurier. Ooh, uh, Daniel, I'm glad you brought up Val Fleurier. Uh, I know that Vacher does just great stuff. I mean, from top to bottom. Val Fleurier. I really haven't looked at a watch with a Val Fleurier movement in it. Now, according to, you know, it gets to the point you can't believe anything that these watch companies say. Vasseron Constantin has their two entry-level models of the 56, two versions of the 56, both of which have the uh, Val Fleurier movement. But then they go on to say, well, we were the ones that fixed it up and we did this and that to it. And so it's not like the ones that they have for Piaget or Cartier or one of the other uh, Richemont uh, groups. If it's, um, oh boy, if, it's a, if, if it was sort of based on the Cartier design that, oh boy, what's her name? The, the uh, Caspi something or other, Caspi Forster. The, the watchmaker who won the, the Grand Prix is the watchmaker of the year. Now, that's a, that's a really nice movement. And, and this is one of the other things that, you know, what about this? You know, what if they have, what if they have something like, a, you know, top watchmaker, top watch, you know, top-notch movement, and they say, look, you know, it's crazy for us to all sort of set up shop making the same thing. And it's a really good movement, so why don't we use something like Val Fleurier, and we'll make the good movements here, and then go from there. Uh, I think Vasseron Constantin had one solution, is that, look, boy, let's drop it to half price, because they've never had an entry level, I think, that was really under, well, not much under 20,000. Uh, but here are the, uh, the 56 is like, I think, 10 or 11, something like that. Okay, Val Fleurier makes the Panerai and new it's IWC horrible. ones. Also Cartier. Yeah, yeah, I know. Daniel, you're right. See, the thing is, is that Val Fleurier is, was set up and run by um, Richemont. 
So yeah, they that they have the other ones in there. And so th this is what do you guys think of that? Okay. Yeah, Mikey Parrish or Mike White Parrish, um, your point about Weiss is is that yeah, they, they, they can they can get what's called an iboche. And these have all of the parts, and then if they make a different base for it or do something with it, they can sort of begin to make that kind of claim that, hey, this is in-house. And nah, that's that's pretty legit. I, I think that th this is the Valju uh, 736. You might, They may have started with a um, uh, Pazu 7001 uh, Ibosh and, and then made this uh, shaped movement for a rectangular uh, watch, you know, and then to put it something else together, that's sort of getting there. Okay, what else you guys got? Um, uh, used and abused my Safari 2. Okay, what are you guys using and abusing stuff? Harboring is much more creative and honest. Well, yeah, Har Harboring 2 is, and that's one of the reasons they won so many uh, Grand Prix awards. This is the thing I like about a lot of people say, well, ah, Grand Prix, you know, Academy Awards of watches, you know, that's, yeah, that's all political, blah, blah, blah. That's not true, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, you got all of these different experts and, and way beyond our capacity, I can, I can tell you that, and that's how come I like them. Now, to say that there isn't some kind of political nonsense going on, of course, would be naive, but I don't think there is for a lot of the categories. They have these categories like um, uh, heritage, okay? So some company sort of whips up one of their old watches and th there's not even a heritage category to enter. They just sort of pick it out for them. And I got a feeling they're sort of helping along some of these companies that have modest uh, horological uh, materials. <laughs> Okay, yeah, harboring too. Yeah, harboring, harboring does great stuff. I mean, here you've got a, a company that has just a few watches a year. They don't make a lot. They don't charge a lot for them. I don't, I don't know how many. I don't even know if they make a thousand a year. You know, it's harboring Richard and Marie, uh, harboring in their cat Sam. <laughs> I don't know. It's a little small Austrian outfit. Uh, hey, Andreas, let's see, why don't uh, Grand Seiko win any categories? Uh, maybe they just... Uh, okay, Grand Seiko. I think they have won some. They just haven't won too many. See, if you, you put up a Grand Seiko, uh, you know, sort of along the same lines. Why hasn't Rolex ever entered into the Grand Prix? Uh, because they'd get stomped if they did, and they know it. So they got this great reputation. People love their watches. <laughs> why take a why take a chance? You know, in getting like stomped by harboring two of these two two watchmakers and a cat. Uh, Grand Seiko has one though. So is Seiko, but they're usually down sort of the lower levels. Um, yeah, it, it, there's some funny things going on. Like uh, when Tag Heuer won the grand prize. They, they put together a $150,000 watch. They made one of them, and they made it just so they could win the grand prize and brag about it, which is, you know, that's sort of crazy, I think. Um, they also are above it. The sponsor, they do sponsor it. Yeah, I know uh, they do, but uh, they're not above it. They're, they're, just, they're just too smart to enter it, uh, I, I think. I wouldn't if I had everybody loving my watches, uh, and then put it in there. And say, oh, hey, you got beat by a tag Hoyer. That's no good. You don't want that to happen. Uh, I once used to like Grand Prix. Well, truth fears guilty. There's, you know, oh, Grand Prix. Ha ha. <laughs> Pontiac. That is, yeah. Okay. Well, guys, listen. Um, I'm out of time. Uh, but I, I, this is something I, I think that, that we need to think about and talk about and kick around and see how many, where we can find these, uh, these little 
sort of places where they have good movements and even if they're not in-house and they don't have some phony name to them that we can save some dough buying watches and good watches too okay well uh oh man you're not gonna believe the collection that we have tomorrow that collection is crazy you're it's it's <laughs> it's one of the best i've had so far i mean in terms of the quality of watches okay dope um hope to see you tomorrow take care